Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Emergent Gamer Podcast, episode 229. I'm one of your hosts, Neo Aoshi, and I'm sitting with... Trip Zero. And... Felix Hergood. Guys, what's up? What's We're up, here, man? brought to you by the OG Podcast Network. Mm -hmm, of course. Gotta mention that. Oh, um, yeah. Um... And just re just want to do some housekeeping real quick before we just jump into talking about stuff. Keep it. We're on YouTube now. We are. We're, we're yeah. getting videos up there. Mm -hmm. We're putting breakouts of the podcast there. Mm -hmm. Just trying to get that going. So please go out to our YouTube. Just I, I don't we don't have like a hot link for it, but sub it if you have. Yeah, subscribe to that Emergent Gamer. Just Google YouTube search Emergent Gamer. Sure. Yeah. Find us. It's find easy. Us. Start subbing. Start watching there if you want to get some nice tight breakouts of our discussions. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. um, so, how are you guys doing? I'm great, dude. Good. Great. How are you feeling, Felix? We we canceled last week because you're sick. Rough fuck ass week, man. Yeah. Yeah, man. Rough I, fuck uh, ass week. No, like literally at I don't know what today is. Today's the 27th. Mm -hmm. 23rd, mm -hmm. the 23rd, four days ago, I had a flu shot scheduled. At my my employer. Did you get the flu before you got your flu shot? Yeah. Oh no! Like a fucking motherfucker. <laughs> so I have it scheduled, and like incredible. A, literally honestly. five days before the twenty third, I got the flu. Wow, dude. That's so and cool. I finished up the Tama flu, which is like because I caught the flu just so you know in under twenty four hours. Congratulations! Like I realized I had fast. it. You got that fast like, acting flu. Yeah. No, no, no. I don't mean uh, I could have had it prior to the 24. No, he's saying, saying he like caught. I realized I had realized it within he had 24 it. hours. Oh, you caught it early. Mm hmm. And by catching it he early. He caught it and then he caught it. That's be yeah. 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 <laughs> That's good. By, by realizing I had it early, I was able to take what is called Tamiflu. And Tamiflu is like a knockout, but you got to do it within the first 24 hours of having it. So I was able to do that. I was, I was able to knock, knock out the ability to be contagious but what came along with it was this fucking dry cough mm. i don't know if you guys have ever had it but everyone thinks the flu is like when you see it portrayed in like media like tv shows yeah, and yeah. shit you see somebody like with a big runny nose and like that's all bullshit i had no runny nose i had a dry ass hack that would keep me up all night i feel like i've had the flu at some point in my life but i can't remember when where why I had it a few times yeah it's not fun it's, it's really definitely not, not fun. fun. No. Maybe there's different types or whatever, but whatever I had produced a dry ass hack that was just awful. What's the worst sickness you've ever had? I can tell you exactly. Aside from like being, you know, incompetently drunk. <laughs> yeah, that does not count. That doesn't count. It doesn't count. Because that's the only time I've ever really thrown up from being sick in my entire life. I remember. Mm. Uh, can I just tell you a quick story for when I was sure? Sick? Yeah, yeah. I was ten years old, and it was Hanukkah, and I had strep throat, so I had spent the whole week in bed and I remember it because like no one would come near me but they still wanted to like I was a 10 year old kid so mm -hmm. they still wanted to give me presents and stuff for Hanukkah so it was probably the most miserable <laughs> Hanukkah that stood out to me at the time because yep. I couldn't do anything yep. and it was just not it was not fun I had uh I had an earache on Easter once and that was the fucking worst the absolute fucking I, worst oh, no. I guess I could say the worst I ever was sick was uh from uh, food poisoning from, yeah, that'll get you. From, from the, the, Would you eat? I was staying in a hostel. Okay. <laughs> in on Thirty Eighth Street, between Seventh and Eighth Avenue in Man in Times Square, basically, mm -hmm. right right off of Times Square. I was working at MTV. I go in to work at like eight in the morning at MTV. I go in. I immediately get sick to my stomach because I had the night before I had package store sushi sushi from oh, a fucking oh, Jesus. bodega when I was hammered. Gosh, oh no, Felix. dude! I go. How in... is sushi ever the hammered food choice? I don't. It's know. not. Well, it's not the move, chief. Dude, yeah. I go into it's not my choice. This is how you know it's the worst sick you've ever been. I go into work. I go into the bathroom and I throw up in the urinal mm -hmm. when I'm peeing, and I throw up so much blood. Oh, oh god. my god! It's like terrifying. It looks like like I just like oh. murdered somebody in the urinal. Right, we're going to move off this topic Hold on. in a minute. <laughs> I, I, I walk out with blood running down my face like I'm a vampire and I just ate somebody. And I stumble up like to my... true blood. I stumble up to my manager. You didn't clean your face in the bathroom? No. Man, I stumble up to the manager and the manager goes, yeah, you're going home. And I, I was like, okay, thanks. <laughs> and I just walk right out the door. I stumble back the five blocks from work because it was right in Times Square where I was working. And I get to the hostel I was staying in and this is how you know it's the worst sick ever. You call everybody in your phone 
that you know and no one answers. And you think when you're going to sleep that this is the last moment you're ever going to be alive. <laughs> that oh is when God. you know it's the worst sick ever. Yikes. And I woke up 13 hours later hungry. Well, yeah, because like you expelled everything out of your body yeah. in one way or another. Mm-hmm. That was the worst sick. Yikes, ever. dude. Yeah. Well, I've had bronchitis, and that sucked, but your story wins, so we can move right along. Let's move along. That one. Let's just jump into video games. How about yeah. that? Yeah. yeah. All right, so it's going to be a beefy show. we got a lot of news that we're going to talk it's, about. It, it was a big fucking week for well, we, a lot a lot of gaming a lot of sphere. Stuff yeah. But first, let's talk about a game we've been playing, Felix and I, yeah. more specifically. We have. I've been watching. Um, we've been playing Outer Worlds. Damn right. It came out Friday. A lot so of people I've have, had, yeah. I think I've already had about 12 hours with it. No, no, I'm pushing 17 hours. I just want to let you know that I had a pre-order for this. Did you? And I was not dumb. I discovered that Outer Worlds would be fe- featured on the Game Pass, yeah. which I'm already mm-hmm. paying for. Sure. So I immediately went into the Xbox and canceled my pre-order. That's cool. I well, was, a- was able to play the game free on the launch. And it's funny, though, but I think this is one of those games that's like worth buying. Just because of oh, no, I the agree. quality of it, I would have bought it anyway. But, but. I, I too did game, I too did Game Pass. Um, and let me tell you, my experience with this game, it's been a freaking delight this, this so whole time. Has mine. Um, and we've a been delight. We've been having two very different experiences. Yeah. With the game. Oh yeah. Of our play styles. <laughs> but the good news is, this talk is, about yours first. I will. I'm going to talk about mine first, <laughs> if that's okay. <laughs> But but the good, cool thing about this game is is it is one of those games that is um, it allows for various play styles, right? Mm-hmm. It is a game when you build your character, you can build your character any way you want to play. You want to be just a gunman, you can put all your points into gunning. Um, you can design your uh, your character around any kind of style, like lock picking or science or dialogue or any any of those things. Those are all very um, very awesome, very cool unique ways to play the game Mm -hmm. um but one of the standout parts i think is the world that that they throw you into um you essentially are just thawed out from space and they they thrust you into the world and honestly this game is it's it is i described this before the show it's like mass effect and new vegas kind of like got together and had a nice space baby um and it it, it is a it's a set piece it's not so people aren't like it looks like no a movie no, 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 no. I mean, saying. like, no. It's like fabricated, like a movie. It's, 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 it's a game that's. It's not like No Man's Sky. You don't want to get that impression, right? You don't want to think that it's just like this world. It's your oyster. You can go wherever you want. Yeah, it, no. It, it's it's designed yeah. for very specific experiences, it's the, moments. It's designed like to play that. a certain way. Sure. Things are mm-hmm. where they are. Right, right, right. But as, in a certain way, to like a point though, because I think most of the player choices and such comes out of how you interact and how you choose to interact with all the different like world elements. So like the universe is essentially like this corporate owned, like corporations are running these various planets and sure. systems and yeah, stuff. Yeah. And it's true to form that people have said that it, that reminds them yeah. very much the, the brand names and the aesthetic remind them of Bioshock. Bio, okay. Yeah. That makes a lot of it sense. Feels like a lot, a lot Bioshock. Of, a lot of nice branding. It's, that's the biggest vibe that I got when I was watching mm-hmm. streams of it. Mm-hmm. Um, that's not inaccurate. No, definitely not. Very Bioshocky, um, and a lot of a lot of these gameplay elements are like break down to like you having conversations with people and making choices in these conversations, mm-hmm. and you get reputations with these factions, and it, it all changes how the world kind of pushes and pulls against your character, mm-hmm. um, and it's it's a pretty it's a pretty cool thing. Right? And the, and the game does a great job of defining to you the moments when you making a decision got you the experience for it. So, like, you'll pick the lie option, and you'll get experience for lying. You yeah. pick the mm. telling the truth persuasive thing, you're getting experience for that. You're getting experience for other decisions, you know, that, that I might have made. Everything you do. Mm-hmm. Everything you do. Right. Mm-hmm. Earns you skill Pretty much everything what you're doing. builds a character in a certain way. So you can essentially decide to make your character a bureaucrat from the beginning who's a... Who, whose main flaw is only lying right. and just have the character lie through and earn enough experience playing that track, and it feels rewarding to do it that way. Mm-hmm. Sure. 
For as sure. much as it feels to be the great character who does everything great or and there's a lot of gray in between all those things like because you can play it as loose or as hard as you want like just being evil or good or chaotic or mm -hmm. neutral or whatever well um, there's a there's a whole thief track you know yeah not where you don't specifically pick a class of thief but you play those attributes of the character more and you're, you're going to build towards your, your, your thieving your, experience like you're like i'm assuming you can you can pickpocket and stuff like yeah. that you can't until you've done it enough so you get or, good at it. And you have, you have to level up your lockpick. saying the, yeah, the, the mechanic lock is in the game, right? Yeah. yeah. It is. And then it, you get it high enough, you can be, like, not be detected. Sure, and, sure, sure. Um, and the way they, they actually, like, weigh out your stats, it's kind of cool. Because at first, you get you could, you could every time you level up, you'll put points into, you know, melee, gunning. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and those are all, like, kind of like a grouping of, of, of sorts. Mm -hmm. But, like, let's say you want to Im improve your gunning. You, you level that up to 50 points, let's say. I think that's... The, all of them, if you level them to 50. Because at first, you level them all. Then once you hit 50 points, you have to specialize even further. So then you'll just... You'll be putting... Dumping more points into, like... I like handguns better, so I'll just dump into the handgun instead sure. of the long guns. Right, right. Or the science weapons. You can... You can like, that's just yeah, an yeah. example. Um, so then you'll... That's even, like, further specialization of, like, what you want to do in the, with your character. Yeah, in um, my playthrough, my first playthrough, I ended up putting all my points uh, into melee and combat for obvious yeah, reasons yeah. they'll get into. Yeah. Um, but then I got very specific because I realized that I was only using one-handed melee. So, I then, wasn't... so then you would just dump all your points yeah, into that. I yeah. did one-handed melee, not two-handed at Can all. Can you take points back and respect? There is a res there is a respect machine. I, I've never used that. I haven't used well, it I don't even know where it is. But... It's on your ship. It's on the ship? Mm -hmm. Cool. I saw something interesting as I was watching a, um, a playthrough of this. This player got a message from the game that said, you've been permanently maimed. Yeah. And you can choose to accept this permanent, like, 20% reduction to all of your skills mm -hmm. in exchange for a skill point. So it's, uh, you get These flaws. Are flaws. They're yeah. flaws in the game. Um, for example, I ran into this flaw. Um, I took too many drugs. So mm. I became an addict That's so the as, a, as a flaw, mm -hmm. right? That's just an easy one to get. Sure. Um, you can, like, get, like a, like, a broken leg if you take fall damage too yeah, much, yeah. too. But... What ends up happening is you get addicted to drugs, so you need to take drugs to keep your stats back up. Mm -hmm. And then if you accept the flaw, you get refunded a skill skill points so you can keep putting skills into sure, everything. Sure. So you have a negative attribute, but you can supplement it with a more more skill points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. At the end of the game, my playthrough, because mm -hmm. I've completed it. You haven't completed it, have obviously. I have not. I have not. I'm, be a while. I'm doing story, story mode. Right. So in wanna, my, com my completion, I completed it. I had... Drug addiction, that was one of them. Mm -hmm. And then I had rap, rap, raptophobia, which is there's a creature, which is a fictional dinosaur type creature called a rapidon. I had raptophobia. I had been attacked by rapidon so frequently that I was terrified of them. <laughs> so how did that affect it, your life? It manifested being... in um, rapophobia, I think, like manifested in when I'm a, in an area where they are, I would get lower stats. Oh, shit. To make you a little bit more vulnerable. So if them. I was in the area where uh, they were, okay. I would be more vulnerable. So it only showed up then. I also had ro robotophobia at the end. So, so I was afraid of robots. Is, is been the, the, robots the trade off always this debuff for a skill point? And are skill points really that valuable that you take yes. these things? They are. Yeah, skill points are pretty valuable. They're hugely valuable because you get, you unlock like longer time dilation. Like time dilation is, which is the re is, the VATS replacement. It's the VATS replacement. Yeah, yeah, was, yeah. It sounds like it slows down, slow down time, time and allows you to like pick parts of somebody's body. Yeah. but it, it doesn't do it like VATS where it's auto targeting. It's like you, yeah. you're. It's just literally a slow down time. You shoot in the and you choose how to attack in mm -hmm. that time. It's, but, but later like, on, I I actually unlocked a perk that allowed me to see specific points of the body where it would be execute. So if I picked execute, they die instantly. I need to, right. I need to jump dump more points into the time dilation stuff. Yeah, yeah. Whatever, whatever point, and I don't remember what point I picked, but toward the end of my playthrough, I would swing my sword in time dilation, and if I did a body shot with the sword, I would sever their body in half. Like yeah. it got got to the point where it was like super interesting with the time dilation. So. So that's I'm awesome. assuming there's not enough points in the game to fill everything out, and that's why no. these. You gotta be choosy. That's why these uh these. What are they called again? The flaws. debuffs? The flaws. That's flaws. why the flaws uh, really make you think because you mm -hmm. get a whole extra point. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it, yeah. It, it makes you it adds to the like the depth of like choice that you need to make. Mm -hmm. And 
consequences to whatever actions you've been taking sure. throughout your, your yeah, game Yeah, exactly. Time. I like that. That's a really cool system. It is. I mean, the level cap, I think, is 30, as yeah. far as I know. Um, but you can – I mean, I know you can respect and go, okay, well, now I want to dump – like if I want to change my playstyle mid game, I can do that to an extent because when you build your character in the beginning, you're picking very some very specific attributes to your character. Right, right, right. Um, like I did pick, like I built my guys like a science guy with dialogue options and all that. So I wanted to be able to science my way through sure. through the universe. And I I can confirm that if you play the game the way I play, there is not enough experience in the game to hit level thirty. Not even close. Yeah, because what I, <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, we'll get into your game. I want to talk it. more about the com- like the companions and stuff first. Yeah. But yeah, the way you played, you're missing out on a lot of dialogue options, like dialogue Tons, XP. Yeah. Um, and that is like a really important part of the game. That's like, like honestly, like the companions section of the game, like which is in Mass Effect games, is a huge. People see that as like being one of the best parts of Mass Effect. The relationship your character has sure, to, yeah, yeah. to the crew that you acquire. Um, and I got to tell you that that is here in spades in this game mm-hmm. because every companion character is so unique and fleshed out and has their own story to tell. Um, like for example, two of the first characters that you meet, there is a like a viker, a vice, viser, viker, viker, viker. Thank you. He's like a he's a very like priestly like guy. A priest, yeah, yeah. yeah um, and you meet a engineer. Uh, this is this female engineer. Yeah, I don't. I, so adorable. I, honestly, I don't even know where you meet companions. You. By talking to people. Right. <laughs> just, just saying. Because, <laughs> right. Um, so what ends up happening is you, when you get companions, they you, they you can have two tag along with you at a time. Um, and That's pretty cool. In conversation, they will, depending on what who you're talking to and how you're talking to people, they'll also jump into the conversation and mm-hmm. have their own input. And, and they will also contribute to whatever – is going on in the conversation. So they're not just like door, they're not a bunch of like wooden planks just right, standing right. around. They have their own personalities that they inject into. They help your story take a, a unique spin. Exactly. And then depending on who you take with you, like for example, there's one character who like is completely anti corporation. So anytime you're talking to someone in the corporations, he will, he'll, he'll, you know, talk back to them constantly sure. and, and yeah, start yeah. fight and wants to start fights. Um, one person like the, the Vi- the Viker, Vicar. 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 Thanks. Vicar. I'm sorry. I've... It's it's a word from English. Yeah. 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 Um, whenever you're talking, he's he's all about order and order in the universe. And mm-hmm. he's all about there's always an explanation for something. We we follow the teachings and blah, blah, blah. And he's also very science driven as well, yeah. which is very which is a very unique thing for, you know, religion, religious based guy. But he's always but he's always about finding the answers. So like he'll always pop in with like comments like if you go, if you like lie or go crazy with like a conversation, he'll pop it and go, I don't know if that's the right choice. Like, I think that's a really, that's, that's not the way to go, Captain. Yeah. Like, he'll say things like that and he'll, he'll play off his personality in mm-hmm. those moments. Mm-hmm. Um, and they also have their own story quests that you, that you fulfill and it helps you get to know the characters a lot better. And nice. honestly, by far, it's the strongest part of the game. Just the amount of dialogue and choices and combinations you can pull out with these characters. Not to mention, they're pretty fun to pull off in combat. Sure. Because they all also have like unique fighting styles and special abilities that you can like, like in Mass Effect, you can. I know, I know in Mass Effect Two, you could like trigger your your teammates' abilities during right. combat. Same similar thing here. You can trigger their abilities in the middle of fights. And some characters have their own talent tree, or no, they all have their own talent trees, which will also benefit you in, let's say, dialogue. Like the the vicar. Will also improve Great your dialogue job. skill. Thanks, I know I nailed it. <laughs> um, you did it. The engineer, the female engineer I told you about. Um, I can't, rem- I can't remember her name right. Pavardi, I think her name is. I, I want to say. Pavardi. Yeah, that sounds right. I only learned that because I watched your stream. Oh, I'm cool. sure. That's right. I'm sure. Yeah. She didn't um, make it. When she's in your party, she will increase your engineering and science skill because she's really good at that. And you can also give her like um, like a threat generation mm-hmm. or threat reduction. So you don't like you just want them to DPS like you can you can apply that to them nice. or you can have them take in take in all the threat like in a like in like a like a MMO style game party like a tank like a tank yeah thank you um, so yeah those like like honestly that to me has been like the most fun part about it just like living on the ship doing doing the firefly thing yeah. where you have like these really unique characters that all have these very unique push and pulls mm-hmm. with each that other. ship super reminds me of the firefly ship. Yeah, just the way it's like laid out and designed. Just the, the, yeah. the interior design of that, they were like, let's take the set from Firefly and make it the ship. Yeah, 
That's more what less. they did. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Uh, Feels a lot just of the like... game is like very Firefly like too. Like like I've come across like a Western style town that's very much like it, yeah, it looks like a like a cute like a Western set yeah. almost, but it's like on an alien planet, so it's all like weird. You're not talking about Edgewater. I'm not talking about Edgewater. I'm talking about one of the other planets, which. By Felix, you can't access unless you do the mission to unlock the key to, to get the landing pad for it. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Felix, do you want to just talk yeah, about how you how you, how, how played, you played this game? Because you, you can't do a lot of things, and you're missing out on some <laughs> some pathways here, and I'm sure people are There's curious. There's so as to, much of a game I missed. I just feel, what I feel done. so horrible. I mean, like, I'm glad you're enjoying yourself, but like, I, like every time you talked about it like in Discord or on Twitter or whatever, I'm just like... Felix, you're missing out on like the bright spots that this game is offering, no, and you're just no, he's, and you're just gl- you're just no, gliding the, right over it. No, see, you know the the bright spot is that for him, and it's just filling his heart with joy. It's just, it just dis- it hurts me. Uh, hey, because this look, is such a well designed game. I'm not a one trick pony. In all these respects, <laughs> okay, I'm not a one trick pony. I'm gonna play through the game again. I've sure, already said that. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, what did you do? Well, I know Obsidian, and I. I discovered by mistake with Fallout New Vegas. Mm-hmm. When I was playing Fallout New Vegas, I discovered and realized when I went on a shooting spree that the deaths that took place in New Vegas, which are, was essentially the capital of that whole game, mm-hmm. were all permanent. And yeah. I went, it's permanent. this is fucking, this is cool. I can be, I can be a murder bot. I can kill everything here. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, and Once you kill everyone, what's left, though? Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> so once discovering I could do that, I was like, I want to test the limits of this whole system. Like, can I break this game? Now, with New Vegas, you could. And, and here was the one aspect that you could break by doing this. You lose access to all shops. There was no vending machines to my... Well, there might have been, but I can't recall there being major vending machines in New Vegas. And when you went through, yeah, you could play all of New Vegas... By shooting every character and killing every faction, and the one quest you could never kill was the robot in town, who who would just, if you killed the robot, he would just show up again in another robot. He's like, I'm a program that just got re-downloaded. Mm. You can't kill oh, that's me. So, that's yeah. weird. No, it was perfect. Perfect I mean, I mean, design. Sure, I mean, I didn't know. I mean, and I know they, you're talking about, but I don't they remember They that. did that, and as much as they made the game for what you played it with, which I totally agree is a, a great way to play it, and I'm going to play it that way. They also designed it to be exactly like this. They wanted to see if they could make a game with New Vegas originally where somebody could kill all the threads in the game and not break the game. And the one thing that New Vegas... What do you count as breaking the game, though? Breaking the game is uh, what, what the one time it happened... Well, okay. Before I get to that, let me, ex- <coughs> let me, let me just explain uh, essentially what I thought was most broken about Fall New Vegas. Fall New Vegas, I couldn't go to shops after it killed the shop owners. I couldn't but, trade. But that makes sense, though, because you oh, killed right, the Oh, right, because you people. killed them. Yeah, because right? you killed them. So there was no no way of, other than killing people, of getting new supplies and replenishing myself. Mm-hmm. The reason why this... Now, they're the same companies. Obsidian developed both of these games. The reason why this one is superior to Fallout 76 design is... They included the vending machines. So I could play the entire game the way I played it and not feel like I broke my experience. Right. You because could continue I could, just, I could continue spree. getting ammunition and, and supplies and food and things like that from these like random vending machines that are all over the world. Mm-hmm. So I think it's a better design than New Vegas for this purpose. However, there was one moment at the end where I, I had to go back. I had to re... I had to go an hour back in my manual saves Mm -hmm. because I got to this point where there's this woman who's very powerful, which you haven't gotten to, Mm -hmm. but you get to this powerful woman and she says, I want to meet with you. And when you get to her outer door, if you shoot all her guards, she seals the door and then you can never kill her. So there's one character that I could kill that I couldn't kill. And I went, I got to go back. man. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You terminated it. I, I just, yeah, I, I reversed time an hour just so I could, like, get back get back to it. I got her. I got her. <laughs> Nailed it. There's literally only two characters. I got her. There's literally only two characters in this game that you can't kill. That's the robot that's, or the computer program that's on the ship, Ada. Can't mm-hmm. kill her. And you can't kill 
the NPC character you meet at the very beginning, Dr. Wells. I believe there is a way to kill him. There might be, but not in, so. the, not in the all-murder playthrough. No, because yeah, when you see him the next time you see him, it, he's behind Bulletproof. He locked himself in a room when you go to his space station. Mm-hmm. He's, one of, he's like a main character. You can... And a cool choice, one of the cool choices you make are you can turn him into the corporations because he's wanted. Yeah. Or you can lie and say you don't know where he is. But you do know where he is because you're working with him. Sure. I um, turned him in. He didn't get killed. Hmm. He probably would have. My guess is he probably stopped. I don't want to spoil it for you. He, I'm, my guess is he probably stopped working with you because he found out that you turned him in. That's just my guess. Don't guess. I won't. Just play. I will play. I'm going to continue <laughs> playing. But, um, but you're right. I you're feel right. bad, though, because... I mean, like, I'm glad you had a great time. I never like, met cool. a companion because I probably killed them. Because you probably them. killed them. Yeah. Right? I don't, you're saying the vicar He's a, yeah. was somebody who could be a companion. Yeah. You I just, remember you going do, at You do missions for him. And I went at it for 20 minutes with that vicar. <laughs> My God. I, I buckled down in the vicar's, like, that was a great place to do a shootout. The church, too. yeah. Because I was, like, behind his pulpit. And I was just, <laughs> I was using his defense. You know, I sh- shot him and then, like, 20 people from the city came in to shoot me. Cool thing that they have is they have. Um, I noticed that if you play a normal playthrough, you can actually improve this. Um, there's a cower feature. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That if you get crazy enough on somebody, they actually cower. I believe that's like a dialogue bonus. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. So I started putting points into the dialogue bonus when I didn't even think I needed to for my playthrough. Mm-hmm. I was like, no, oh, I'm gonna. Why would I need dialogue? And then I realized. Oh, if I put points into the dialogue, I get these people to cower faster. They get intimidated. They're more intimidated by my fearful persona yeah. of nuts. Crazy. My Terminator. This, this it made me feel like machine. I was a Terminator. It was amazing. Pretty much, yeah. But there's probably a lot you missed and didn't see, like planet-wise, totally, too. Totally, totally. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you the faction that is going to be the most difficult, rather you do it my way or the normal way. You're probably going to want to talk to them, not fight them. The uh, iconoclasts are the most armored motherfuckers ever, dude. Wait, really? Yeah. Because I can't. I ran into them. They're like a bunch of like. They're kind of like outcasts, kind of. They're kind yeah, of. Like, they, they're, they don't like the corporate life, but they're their own. Right. Their own. But they're community. armored up. They are really armored up for the level I was when I got to them. I was. I struggled with them for hours, dude. It's fascinating. It took me so long to get through the iconoclast camp. I mean, obviously, killing everybody is not going to make people happy yeah but really like gonna, for instance the the other really gonna want to help you out bud the other group the um they're in like a cave did you go to that one yet they're on the same planet it was called slag town or that S- oh i think i'm i'm call, approaching Shla- that right now. slamville or I, <laughs> slamville I'm, i think I, I think that's the next thing i'm doing going in my smashville story. going downtown to slamville gonna go down to smashville um slag city i can't remember I went to the, this group of people, and after I'd done the Iconoclast, and I'd spent hours, literally hours, on the Iconoclast village. And then I get to this other place, and I'm like, oh, more trouble. I'm so dead. And I get in there, and they're all wearing, like, you know, fancy suits. And I was like, oh, this is going to be great. Killed, <laughs> killed everybody in the town in, like, oh, 20 minutes. Oh, my God, dude. Jesus. It was so great. Uh, except for one guy. And that's probably plot-related. There was a probably. guy. Sorry, there's three characters in the game I couldn't kill if you do it my way. In that one town that I just talked about, there is a guy who's behind a door. And you walk up to the door and he goes, not now. I'm busy. And then I killed the whole town and I went up to the door. He still said, not now. I'm busy. I think you can only get him to come out if you actually play a plot line that gets mm. him out of the. Yeah. But that was it. I mean, every other character you can you can take down. That's crazy. All the way to the end. So. I think you should go back and play it with no, I am. the attention of like enjoying the story. I told my next character build is going to be uh, a bureaucrat, so cool. she's coming off the the colony ship as a bureaucrat, and her only flaw is going to be that she's a liar. That's cool. I like that. So she's going to lie to people in every dialogue. Um, yeah, I mean, you'll find like just just to close out this talk on on this, um, you'll find like a lot of the missions force you into like positions that make you choose like different different outcomes. Sure, like. This is this is like within the first few hours of the game if you're playing like story wise, mm-hmm. you you have to choose between an Edgewater being run by a corporation that's that treats its its population like like assets instead of people right. kind of, and oh yeah yeah spacer time right Spacers. and and then there are a bunch of outcasts in like that live north mm-hmm. of Edgewater who uh, the deserters they're deserters run but by, by Adelaide by Adelaide she. Uh, 
and her community are like living on off the land and they're growing crops and they're they're happy that right, they're right, away. Right. And you're forced you need to repair your ship, which you're which you're gonna get which you, which is your, which is the Firefly ship, you know, mm-hmm. the main ship. And you have to choose well, if I pull the power from Edgewater, then all the people in Edgewater die and the corporations mm-hmm. takes a hit, but the people. Right. Right, right, right. Or I can take it from the outcasts. And there are multiple endings to this quest plot line. Mm-hmm. I'm sure, yeah, depending pick. on what you've done, yeah. Yeah, and I think I, uh, for me, I think I, I picked the best morally straight area, which is like a boring way to play, but like at the same time, I'm like, okay, I, everyone survived, and, except for the one dude who I, who I took care of, and everyone, everyone lived. Are you talking and, about Hobson? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck that dude. Fuck that dude indeed. Um, <laughs> that was the best part. I figured out the, the way the game works is the, the in the center there's always like a tower mm-hmm. and you got to take an elevator up to whoever the leader is. Mm-hmm. Figured that out like early on. I would go right to the tower, <laughs> get yeah. the elevator, ride to the top, walk into the office. Oh, you hey, in charge boom, here? Boom, 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 boom. Mm. Who's in charge here? Who's, who's in charge? Not anymore. And that was it. And then it was like from there it was like clean up. It was great. Oh, nice. yeah. All right. Oh, All right. It, dude, when you play it my way, I'm not going <laughs> to. I, I know you're not going to. But there's, finish a, this play through there's a play whole Death bit of like, like when you finish the game, like different dialogue options. It's not dialogue options, but like, uh, you know, little blurbs about what happened to all the different communities because of your destruction. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's really cool. Oh, that's exciting to look forward to. Well, you, you're never going to look forward to it because you're not going to play it how I played it. Oh, that's true. They'll never probably still tell well, him it, how he affected it. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you're going to get all that. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Well, shall we move on to the news, boys? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. So first up, let's talk about Mixer making moves. Want to jump into that real Mixer quick? Mixer has made uh, two gigantic moves since the last time we, we talked on our show. Um, I forget the exact date at this point. It was a few days ago. Uh, but Shroud made the jump over to Mixer. Saw that. Mm-hmm. Shroud's a, uh, a very popular uh, what did he, uh, first-person shooter. What did he get streamer. his fame on? Uh, the initial bump, I'm not entirely was he, was sure. Was he a Counter Strike guy? He he might yeah might have been. I don't I don't know. We have to look it up. Um, but it, it, pretty much any first person shooter, Shroud yeah. is always the one. He does Destiny. Just destroying. It. Yeah, no, he doesn't do Destiny. Oh no no he does. But like you know, uh, fucking. I'm sure Counter Strike is in there. He, he's he a BR guy. B uh yeah like PUBG he does, that he does kind play of stuff. A lot yeah of yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Apex all that stuff. I'm sure he dabbled in Fortnite. He just yeah. he just. Destroys you. Highly, like, he's just competitive first-person shooter player, yeah. pretty cool. much. And I think Shroud was a more meaningful move to gamers than Ninja was originally. Like, I think that's a more gamer-centric acquisition to make people think of Mixer as a Even more serious Ninja platform. Because Ninja's yeah. like Hollywood. Yeah, and Ninja's then... like Ninja's the name. Ninja's like his T-shirts are in fucking Coles. You know, like you're, okay. you're not going to get a, a Shroud T-shirt in Coles, but yeah. people that like. You know, and this is this is not correct, right? This mentality, but like people that are like, oh, you know, Ninja's not that real of a gamer. He just kind of caught this popularity wave. Again, not true, right? They're gonna look at someone like Shroud and be like, Shroud has been in there, like truly gaming, like truly skilled, just still very very popular. But like Shroud's the guy. Shroud's like a gamer gamer, you know? Yeah, like I would agree. Not I mean, for the kids. Like Shroud's like our. I followed streamer. Shroud on Twitch, not not Ninja. Right, right, yeah. right. Uh, more or less. And I'm not like again, I'm not agreeing with those standpoints, but like I think that's the perception of a lot of people. If you're sure. looking at those two as uh, as streamers and as uh, leaders of people communities. in the know, yeah. Well, not no, I would disagree that they're in the know. People that just are reacting as consumers, hmm. but then, consider themselves like you know a hardcore gamer label. Got it. You know. And Goliath made the jump today. Gathalion. Gathalion. That's what I meant. King Gathalion announced today at noon that he was making the switch over, which is, to me personally, it's a fantastic and incredible, incredible jump. But um, it's so smart because he has run Guardian Con, which is now labeled as GCX. It's the uh, the biggest charity focused gaming convention. They raise literal millions of dollars every year for St. Jude. They've got their company Rare Drop that handles. Other little initiatives, streaming wise, they got their uh, their Kings Coast Coffee Company. Like he's a guy that does these things, and he has. It's a very community heavy. He's taken focus. his like success with streaming and translated it outwards into, like, into industries and businesses that are that are adjacent, you know, and made a success permanent through all these things, and has given back 
and continues to give back in, in an insane way. So to have someone like that, that forward thinking on a platform like Mixer that wants obviously to compete and wants to be seen more seriously, that's I think the most meaningful get mm -hmm. out of all the ones they brought over. You know, wow, that's it's like, interesting. It's like big name, big name. This guy's gonna get some shit done. Not the not the Ninja or Shroud won't because obviously they have a lot of experience. They have a lot of perspective. It, it seems like Mixer is making all these moves to. This is this is me thinking about like why would you have to do this? Well, mm -hmm. a it's to bring people to your sure, platform, absolutely, right? yeah, to get viewers and get the big names there. Yeah, but also it's all publicity too. Like people are talking about your platform. Thinking long term, I feel like this is their way of positioning the next console generation. They're pre I feel like they're preparing for when Scarlet drops and releases that Mixer, I have a feeling that Mixer will be very heavily integrated into the Xbox ecosystem. Sure. Well, in it already some, is. It's, oh, of course, yeah. of course. But in some way where, like, this is them just positioning, okay, you want, you, you get an Xbox if you want to check out Shroud or Ninja or, you know, and, like, they're setting, they're setting like, Ninja and Shroud and Gal Gathalion mm -hmm. up to be probably used to, I want to say advertise, let's say, the next Halo game. Probably be, be the be the faces of these. That's next, gonna be these like next Ninja, like specifically. Sure, for sure. You why know? not? Um, and they'll get all the exclusive time and and you know the exclusive views for mm -hmm. that. I, this is just me guessing. Oh yeah, I'm just There's, guessing. That's I the, think that's the move. They're definitely they have moves like that thought out for each of them, probably individually. And everyone that they brought on is not just a large name. Right. To bring an attraction they have to mixer, specific skills. there's yeah. there's gonna be like tapping their knowledge and their experience in the streaming space to improve the platform and whatever they have planned mm -hmm. for future Microsoft products. You know, for sure, for sure dude. Because, um, I mean, you just, you can't avoid how skilled these people are in their, in their spheres. In their field, yeah. yeah. Um, and with that said, though, there is a lot of problems I still do have with Mixer, um, which, I, which I talked about this morning on, tw on Twitter. Sure. Um, some of my problems are that I think they need to overcome are, like, they need to be, Avail Mixer needs to be available on more than just the few platforms it's currently on. So, like, the best places to watch Mixer right now, probably Xbox One, the the all those consoles, your web browser, and your phone device, your mm -hmm. Android or your iOS device. Right. Um, with that said, that experience on the iOS not not great to me. Don't I still don't get notifies notifications when you go live, mm -hmm. like at all. Um, the Xbox app on my phone does that. Right. I don't know why it would do that when you're just going to open me up in the Mixer app. That doesn't <coughs> that doesn't compute to me. Right. Um, and not to mention that all of my TV apps, my Roku, my Apple TV, Fire TV, PlayStation 4, which is admittedly kind of a difficult thing from with Microsoft sure, translating sure. over. No Mixer there. I can't watch Mixer in my living room. Right. Comfortably. Well, there was no way to watch even Twitch that way up until very very recently there was twitchy which was like a well, third party is there a twitch app now there's an official twitch app now yeah but on the apple tv but if you have a fire stick which is a very popular device amazon owns twitch right that app is very readily available there so they stay position themselves to let people watch twitch sure in their course, living room yeah, yeah. ps4 and i'm sure the xbox also has a twitch app too yeah i don't have an xbox i can't tell you yeah but um and roku I have the, they just released the they finally got the Oops. Twitch app out you there. You fucking motherfucker. I was on chat only. It's fine. Um but yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Like I I I want to see Mixer be more available in more devices. Sure. Right? And like even even Apple who's releasing their Apple TV Plus app this this winter. Mm -hmm. Um that just became available on my Roku. Like they just spent like you don't need Apple TV to watch us. Just get our right. piece of software, and now you can. Enjoy I heard our that service. that shit wasn't even happening until like the spring. Oh, I downloaded on third party TVs. No, Roku, my Roku downloaded. It's crazy. I, I saw it, and I was like, "Yep." No, that. maybe it is third party TVs. You downloaded it on a Roku. A Roku. That's different. Uh, but it's the Roku built into my TV. Oh, it's a Roku that's that built meant. into your TV. I don't know if that meant kind of like yours. Yeah, 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 pretty much. So I I need to see Mixer more available. That's like my that's like honestly yeah. my biggest complaint. Yeah, I, and honestly, I think that you will. I mean, I hope so. At least before the next Xbox, they're not going to do this and and not have other plans to improve their service I in so, a yeah. lot of different ways. My guess would be it would be around the time of at least before the Scarlet comes out or around the, the Scarlet's release. Sure, like, I would hope to see that. Because your feedback is the same feedback that a lot of people have said. Okay. Too. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's it's little little things that could optimize the whole overall experience, right? Yeah. And the more 
background audio on iOS. I, I, I care about that. The more people that, that come through to the platform, the more they're going to see these things, hear these things, the more engaged voices they have streaming, they're going to be able to like tackle these problems and hear how it affects them. And it's, it's all part of the plan. Of the thousand percent. Yeah. Like, yeah. The, like the Cylons. It's part of the plan. So it's, it's honestly really, really, really exciting. As well as the fact that obviously Catalian plays Destiny too. And that's that's, that's your jam. That's my jam. So yeah, yeah I just follow be sharing them. that directory. All right. You uh, do get free subscriptions for these uh, new transfers over to Mixer. So mm. go give Shroud and Catalian a follow on Mixer.com. Oh, cool. Yeah. A follow and a subscription. Get them emotes. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. And that's the Mixer is the place you prefer to be. Mm -hmm. So this I'm actually this is probably with all these official moves, I think I'm gonna shut down my uh, whole restream situation. That's a shame because I, I watch you on Twitch. I know. I <laughs> Cause, know. Because Twitch tells me when you go live. It does, and yeah. I can just put audio on in the, in my, on my phone and not even have my screen on. Yeah. It's good. I know. It's I'm good, sorry, it's bud. It's a good thing. I got to. I get it. I think I, I got to lane. I got to lane hard, you know? Yeah. All right. Next thing. Do you guys want to talk about these this delay these delays that have just occurred this yeah, week? Yeah, let's run through them. Um, get because people the last, aware. Because our last topic is going to be a big one. Yeah. Which is Fallout related. Okay. Let's get it. Let's get this stuff out of the way. So Ubisoft, in an earnings call this week, announced that things aren't going so well for their current lineup. And essentially, Big surprise. Essentially, they have pushed back three of their main temple games. They pushed back Watch, Watch Dogs Legion. They pushed uh, words. They pushed back Watch Dogs. They pushed mm -hmm. back. Jeez, what were some of their other games? It's not a new Assassin's Creed. They haven't announced one yet, so there wasn't one coming. Gods of Monsters and Rainbow Six Quarantine. They will be, de they will, they will be delayed. And in this earnings call, they also announced that they, they haven't meet, met the standards to their shareholders, essentially. Like uh, Division 2 and Breakpoint didn't make waves like they hoped. I fucking believe that. Waves or money. Waves or money. Um, because and, uh, they, they, they're businessmen, so they have projections. Sure. But now they're working on a new model. The former projections were release of game, game comes out, we sell a certain amount of copies, copies fade off, and then people aren't buying them as much mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. That's the business model. Now the expectation is the game comes out, then we release shit over time, people buy more shit, they and then over the time, game. our projection is we're going to make this amount of money in a three-year period of time. Right, right. This game will make this much money. Now. It will make this in this period of time based on the statistics we have in the past of what people did with previous games. They bought this, then they bought this shit we released, this shit we released, this shit we released. And the problem is when you release all your games like that, when every none, game's like none that, of them can be played for that long period of time because your fans are going to move to the next game. You are only one human. You're only one X human. X amount of time in and the day. Dollar, yeah. And dollars, I would say, yeah. unless you're a whale. Sure. In some cases. Unless you're a whale. Unless you're a whale. Um... Which, but, is, which is what companies call the players that spend the most money. Yeah, there's fucking the way, yeah. no goddamn way that somebody's going to be able to. And I saw this back when I was trying to balance the Division coming out and Destiny coming out. There's no goddamn way that I was going to be able to do Division and Destiny at the exact same time. Mm -hmm. And when De Division came out, I got hardcore into that. And I was like, okay, I'm going to drop Destiny. Yeah, and it's, uh, and it's even You're talking Division 1, right? Division 1, yeah. yeah. like 2015 yeah. style. Because that's yeah. when I was trying to, like, balance both of those at once yeah. so, so now this year for example ubisoft released division two which is an, a live service game that they want you to repeatedly repeatedly play and unfortunately didn't meet up to my standards as, or i want to say like collectively our it's, standards i mean the game was a fantastically made game from technically oh and it's bang up and I it's it. beautiful and its version of dc was incredible and one-to-one -one. fyi was... i play. you guys were playing with a team and crew and everything yeah. like that yeah i played the entire the entire experience all the way up until what when you unlock the rage the, the, the stronghold, stronghold final stuff, yeah. final yeah, yeah. i played all of that completely by myself and loved which it. which you can which you can well, yeah. and it's great it's and scaled wonderfully between solo or multiplayer for the same content and yeah. it's honestly some of the best cover based, based gameplay i've ever played in, in, in a i game. had nothing but positive things to say about the game but the problem for a, is, for a world that they want you to be in permanently there was no reason to be in there no permanently no reason and they didn't nope. give you as many things to chase and you hit a wall by the end of the game, and I, I've gone deep into in the past of the failings of its like actual RPG systems, mm -hmm. which kind of I felt like took a step back from Division One. Yeah, that that also kind of was another switch that sure. turned turned me off to the game, which is yeah, unfortunate. Yeah, I had no desire to like play end game and like and build a character and 
really sit into like specific specs for for play styles and stuff. I just had no like desire to do that because I'm like, what am I going to even do with this? Neither did yeah. I. Didn't do the raid. And then, and then you have um, Breakpoint that came out that kind of takes some cues from the division system of, mm-hmm. of getting new gear and stuff. It's it's very loose. Very loose. We takes it, but it yeah, gives you much, a gear score. It's, it's much more like division than Ghost Recon. No, it's much more like Ghost Recon Wildlands than it should be. It's exactly like Ghost Recon <laughs> Wildlands, <laughs> but with which, which but you, with a gear score. But maybe? with like a gear score system. Well, with a gear score system. That's so, not yeah. But they added the hub, the hub world, the social hub world, in a, in a, a story that kind of goes against that where you're supposed to be this lone wolf soldier on uh-huh. this island by yourself yeah. that encourages you to play with other people. The whole game is so conflicted with ideas in its in its its whole way because it wants you to continue to play. It wants to be a live service game, but it also wants to be that single player experience <laughs> that you can play co-op. So I get it. I understand why it's not performing. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, and honestly to me now this is just the Neo Aoshi talking. It feels like to me this was just a game created to set up a storefront in a lot of respects as well, which is how a lot of the Ubisoft games to me feel these days, mm-hmm. um, which is, which is kind of a, which is kind of a, a huge tick. I, I will, yeah. I will say that like Assassin's Creed had a storefront, but it did not feel like a shell of a game with a mainly a storm fr- sure. storefront. But because you had the well thought out yeah, they, game they, world. They put out more yeah. effort into that game than it seems like they did at all in fucking, even though, even though Odyssey just moved right, right from, well, it's such a unique perspective to a game, something like Assassin's Creed. Like, I feel like if you're going to have a, a game like, you know, Ghost Recon, Wildlands, or Breakpoint, whatever, you know, whatever version you're looking at, like, how are you differentiating this against other games that are that are group shooters? You know, how, what is, how, why would someone want to play your game over, over those games? You know, like, what's the pull? What's what's the... Wouldn't, no, but wouldn't you say, like, the, the main objective and priority they should be doing is thinking about how to make what they already had better like moving yeah. from what yeah, was that's previous the idea. to For something sure. new yeah yeah obviously you got to beat your competitors and make something better yeah. there but like your formula ha- can't be the same dried out fucking formula it was before right you got to make changes there's which, just there's be, no clarity which is my to point to be fair to me which was assassin's creed for a very long time right um until i mean i don't think i'm ever going to go back to those games anymore but until no. they made that shift to the but open you agree world. O- origins that wait of a year and then origins release was so much better than any previous it Assassin's helps. Creed. They improved and mechanics. And it looks like and... they're taking another year for Assassin's Creed 2, which Good. they should because it looks like they're pushed. They, I mean, they just pushed their other major releases back. Um, so, honestly, for the game wise, game wise, like for like Watch Dogs, I'm, that's the game you want to play, right? Me? Yeah, yeah. Fuck no. That that didn't oh. look interesting to me at all. <laughs> Damn, that's a, honestly that shot. That's a shot. Yeah. yeah. Um, Watch Dogs no, looks very interesting to me. Here's here's ah. the thing. Hmm. I never finished two, man. Bad. I didn't finish two either. I just like driving around San Francisco. Bad, I know. So bad yeah. games that re- yeah. release in a bad state are always bad, right? In, in the public eye. Yeah. yeah. But if you, if you delay a game and make it better, you have the potential to be a better release. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's a smart move, and their investors aren't happy, which is pretty much what their investor call. That's what came out of their yeah, investor call. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, they're not. I mean, they're, I, they're, I, they're I, fine. I, I mentioned but, like, this on a previous show. Yeah. But. The thing that was uh, most frustrating about getting in a helicopter in Ghost Recon Wildlands was you get in on one side, and you're stuck on that side, and there's like a gun that shoots out on both sides. You're stuck on that side. You have no button to switch to the other side of the helicopter to shoot <laughs> out the other side. And knowing that they, that didn't change at all in in from wild point, uh, Wildlands to Breakpoint mm-hmm. proves that they just took the same shit, copy paste, brought it over. Sure, Dude, it, like I, I would love for you to play Metal Gear Solid Five. It's you, right there. I got it. You, I mean, I know it's like an, <laughs> also old, have it's it like on an ga- old game now. I have it on. Yeah, I have it up there. You have it on Game Pass. Now I have Game Pass, and I bought the PlayStation Now. So, you could so pl- I could play it on it all fucking over the place. three different ways. But you won't. Wildlands. I will. You look, won't. Look, Wildlands <laughs> is lie. is like a baby Metal Gear Solid Five. It's it is Metal Gear Solid Five is just I'm not gonna get into it but like it's just it's just like one of the best feeling <laughs> games I've ever played. We we, that, we know that, everyone knows. I know okay. everyone knows except me. All right, let's move on. No, it's fine, man. A lot of people haven't played the game, but like I just feel like you would like it. That's all. That's why I keep. Bringing I, I'm it up. not disputing you yeah. though. 
I'm not. I'm just. I don't have the time. Anyway, I'll just quickly you mention do. we had <laughs> we had some other <laughs> delays, but these were not for financial reasons. Uh, the Last of Us Two was delayed. It was pushed to I want to what was it May? Yeah, that May. fucked me. Yep. Yeah, that did fuck it. And honestly, no, no, I took off for it. So I'm that well, no, you're not fucked. Just put just put the the new put date it back in. on. Just new stop. date. Switch it. Yeah. Change, change the schedule. Yeah, it's fine. It's October. <laughs> Yeah, okay. It's, yeah, you got such a long time. What's, yeah. the new, what's the new I'm date? fucked. It fucked me. <laughs> <laughs> what's the new date? So now, the uh, it's like May May 20th? All right. I'll change the dates. May 29th. Look, you have a specific so, date, too. I think the key information from this is, well... They fucked me. <laughs> I'm totally fucked. <laughs> so it's not really a big deal that they delayed it, because Neil Druckmann actually said they, they wanted to make Fucking sure... Fucking Druckmann. They had, they had a lot more polish. Neil Druckmann personally fucked me. <laughs> well, he wrote the blog post, so yeah, I guess he did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he did. Um, he specifically wrote about how they want to make sure that this game, when it launches, is the best possible game that sure. they could have. I and mean, I'm I read, like, I read his letter, and it's it, he hits all the buzzwords. It's like we we want it to be great. Uh, he hit the um, less stress on our workers as yeah, well. So yeah, like people like that. He, he's there, you know. It's, it's a it's and, a PR letter, thousand percent. But like, I'm not against the and, delay and by any what? means for quality. Neither am I. It's perfect. Like, I I, I can wait for this game. Uh, fall, uh, spring already really crowded. Like, it's yeah. really packed. Damn yeah, right. dude. Um, because Doom just ma- Doom two just made its its shift into that as well. That also got got mm-hmm. pushed. This fall, man, feels like it's a very light fall of top quality big games. The well, Star Wars games coming out. Yeah, that's, that's fall one, uh, Yeah, that's it's one it's one of them. That has not moved yet, and of course, for me, what Death else is coming? Out? Death Stranding, Death like Stranding, Pokemon is Pokemon. coming out. I, I just have Fallen Luigi's Order Mansion, and, in mm-hmm. like two days. Oh yeah, I have Luigi's Mansion too. Um, but Luigi. what was said was, Jason Schreier wrote a tweet. Ghost of Tsushima was supposed to be a PS4 title, and we're losing, we're quickly losing the window of it launching and not getting in PS5's way, right? So this actually, according to Jason's sources, it's kind of screwed. Ghost of Tsushima's release window because it was supposed to come out before the PS5 dropped. Mm-hmm. And now it doesn't give – Last of Us being in that position didn't give – isn't in the release window, isn't giving Ghost of Tsushima enough room to launch cleanly. It's yeah. kind of like stepping on each other's feet. Well, so. unless we don't know that they, they plan to push that back anyway. It could be. But rumor also has it that all PS4 and 5 games will – well, PS4 games will play on a PS5. So mm-hmm. will it matter? There's already like 30 million PS4s in the wild. I'm sure they want to capitalize on the people who have the PS4s, right? Mm-hmm. That's the top-selling console this generation. Right. Yeah. 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 It's not like it'll could... it'll hurt the, uh, the the noise that Ghost of Tsushima makes yeah. if it drops anywhere near a PlayStation 5 release. Yeah. Being a PS4 game. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of interesting to see how that's going to turn out. But I felt like that was just kind of an interesting thing. It is. It is, and it's you. Probably as as Sony, you don't want to lose either product. But if you're gonna have to sacrifice one to save another one, you're going to want to save The Last of Us Two yeah. in the best way. That is that is your your top tier yeah. title. Um, and damn, does it look good? Interesting. Well, well, I guess we'll see how that that's that's all 2020. But yeah, we'll find out. Let's talk about our final topic of the day, which. We've been at it all. We've been discussing this back we've and forth been at all it? week. We've, we've been, been we've been at it. Yeah, we've been at it a little bit. We've been at it on our Discord, which on if t- you haven't joined, please join. On Twitter replies, we've been at it. Don't 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 you mean I've been standing in a corner and you've been throwing <laughs> stones at me? Yes. Don't you, you mean that? You, yes. You've, you've picked a hill to die on, yeah. and we've all decided. I picked a hill to die on, and yes. we and we decided it's hammer. I thought it was at sea getting whaled. <laughs> Either one. You're a land whale. You're a, a land, land whale. whale. A hill whale. All right, let's, let's, let me set the stage before we start talking about it. So Fallout 76 this week announced their Fallout First program. Mm. And what Fallout First is, is a paid... Number one. It's, it's a paid subscription. It's a one-year subscription. God. For $100, they offer you private worlds. A scrap box with unlimited storage. A survival tent. So you can, fa- you can have your stash, sleeping bag, and basic needs met there you'll get 1600 atoms per month you get the exclusive iconic fallout armor ranger armor outfit and some icons and emotes for a hundred dollars a month damn right no no no, no, 100, no 100 a year 100, 100 a year 100 a year thank you thank you hundred dollars so, a month jesus where, where to begin yeah i know <laughs> better jesus suck your Christ. dick too with all that extra stuff man where do you want to begin with this 
Oh, Do you want to begin with the state it launched in? Do you want to begin with how it's not actually private worlds? Do you I think. With... I think. Okay. So so there's there's a or lot of noise on, on the internet, start. obviously. Yeah. Um, if you haven't heard about this out there, I'm very surprised, and I would love love to know how you keep such positivity in your life. So let us know in the iTunes comments. Um, but if you again have not heard about this, a lot of the contention comes from the fact that. The perception is the developers for Fallout 76, Bethesda, are avoiding fixing the game or uh, are cutting out features to then bundle them into a new paying subscription. And Well, that sounds like they well, were oh, there and then and, they and, cut them out and made them a thing. And that's that's really the, the contention point is like, wow, so you're not even truly supporting the game for the people that are playing it. You're looking for a way to make money off of this game even more while it's in a broken, hobbled state right now. Uh, honestly, Neil. Now, that being said, do you do you, you are yeah. a fan of this game. You're a supporter of this game. Well, I've been you, playing it consistently since day one. You yeah. have bought the Fallout First I did. <laughs> membership. And it was great. You bought it yeah, for oh a year. You didn't God. buy monthly. You bought it for a whole ass year. Bought you just year. dropped the 100 on it. Yeah, because it was cheaper. Think about it. That, that's exactly it, what they want you to do. Is it, though? <laughs> no, but, but it, it is. Right, but let's say you're like, you're, I mean, you're right. You'll get a whole year, but like, are you going to mm -hmm. use that whole year? No, probably not. Yeah, yeah. like that's what I'm. That's, that's like a part, part part of that whole thing. And, and you know what I did with uh, Elder Scrolls Online recently is I was playing paying for that fifteen bucks a month, mm -hmm. and I stopped. You know, like you stop whenever when you pay monthly, right? Sure. So with this, I was like, I was like, I roll the dice. By the year. You guys were talking back and forth, so forth about it, and I said, well, I want to try these features out. I figure I'll do it for the show. I'll spend a year playing it, and if it's not worth it, then I'll cancel my app to the year. Right? Here's the thing. Here, tell for, us the for thing. 20, really for, to, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tell us the thing. Here's the facts. For 24 <laughs> fucking hours, mm -hmm. I loved it. Oh. I loved it. I played with it. On a regular basis, and what it added to my gameplay experience was what ESO adds. The the, mm -hmm. the package with ESO gives me for fifteen dollars a month a craft bag. Uh, one of the biggest things that that game and this game have, which is obviously a part of their business model, is a uh, limitation to your storage. So what do you end up having to do? See, well, we talked about see, this in the context of ESO. You remember? I know, but already and you guys told me. That your games do this too. Final Fantasy does this. But the, you don't have unlimited storage in Final Fantasy. You have to manage your menus, right? For the things in your inventories? Yeah. Yeah. You're sure. very right. Same idea. Sure. Kind of. How is it different? It's ESO and Final Fantasy, yes, those are very much similar games. They're both they're MMOs mm -hmm. with functional online servers where I can can stay connected with people right, and party yeah. up in various ways. No, no. That, it, I'm not going to say that I compare Fault 76 to MMOs because it's but not. But you are not, by comparing it to ESO. I'm comparing the business structure. That's right. what I'm comparing. But the problem with Fallout is is it's still in a, a – you might be not – you might be fine with the way it currently is in its current state. Mm -hmm. But it is still not a fully functioning, fully com – like fully – Good to go product. Don't dance around your words, man. It's just a, say what you got to say. It is a pretty much cobbled together, duct taped game. It is not as it's not. Am I? Am I? Uh, I'm not getting there. Am I getting there? You're get. You're. I'll, you're getting there. The game is not. I mean, not saying it's just not good. Is is just stupid. Well, because good is a is a subjective Sub word. Right. Subjective thing. Yeah. What are the what are the reasons why it's duct taped or patched together that you've observed? So, or that you you've heard read about because you well, haven't observed it other no, than I, the last time you played it, which which I ran into many very many bugs. You did at the time it, on the me. PC version of it, like you experienced some shit. You're right that I didn't experience. So yeah, I got stuck in power armor. My, I was T posing everywhere. Enemies yeah. were T posing. What was T posing again? T posing is the when, your arms when are character out. models do mm, yeah, that. No, just yeah. it's the default pose. Um, I haven't seen that in a long time in the game, but. I don't even I don't even know where to begin. <laughs> I think there's so many things that we can discuss about Fallout 76 right. and we have discussed about Fallout 76. We should keep the discussion specifically as much as possible to the membership. It's going to be a little hard because there are things in there that like 
Well, let me people's finish what feelings saying, are in are are like influenced by their overall feelings of the game, mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But I think so at how least about this, at it's least not a good Fallout game. The, okay. How about that? That's, that's, that's <laughs> the, the, yeah, an would, exact perfect example of a different discussion. I would argue that it's my favorite Fallout game so far. For sure. But I like Outer Worlds because it's a better we are Fallout not, we're, game. Yeah, we are, just took it right? to Outer Worlds. Yeah, we're because doing. Outer Worlds does the Fallout thing better. Better. I agree. I would say. Not just dis- disagree Just quality-wise. Just across the game. Fun- Outer Worlds functions. I haven't Let, run into any here, bugs. Here's the fact, Strip. I bought the service, and 24 hours later, I can't use it. So well, how, how did that happen? Because the, the one and, feature— Can I say, told you so? You told me so, sure. What, what the happened? The one feature that they've put a, put in this, and I've already been in their sub- chat support, or tech, they have tech support, which is mm-hmm. pretty cool. I got on their tech support, and the response was, we have no known fix for this. Mm-hmm. It's just broken. So. And this is what a lot of reports have mm-hmm. come out about, which is but, deleting— your materials, right? Literally, okay. So I did the smart thing because I don't even trust the overseers. Right? <laughs> I don't even <laughs> trust the harpooners. Yeah, who are stabbing me with their their whale harpoons. Yes, our um, benevolent harpooning overlords. Right. Uh, I uh, created a character separately. I did not take my current level ninety five. You went like, brand new character into this experience. brand new character. I was smart. like, you know what? What I'll Smart, do, good head on your shoulders. Is I'll fucking like a good faithful QA. My my buddies at the Emerging Gamer Podcast are skeptical of this shit. I'll buy it for the show. I'll run the test so we can talk about it on the show. Whatever I'll gets see what you to sleep like. at night. Dude. It lasts twenty four fucking hours. The test lasts mm-hmm. twenty four fucking hours, and mm-hmm. now I can talk about it on the show. Mm-hmm. Twenty four fucking hours later, my scrap box after I'd filled it up with probably about seven hundred steel, three hundred wood, like. You know, half a dozen screws, like all the stuff that you would need. Yeah. Gone. Completely zero empty. Nothing in there. I tried to put something into it. I put like lead in there to see if it would come back. Nothing. Left the server, came back. Nothing. Um, What else did I do? I mean, what else can I do? It's just gone. And it's not even what they first said. They first said that this shit was like. Oh, it's a visual problem. Yeah. You're just you're not really seeing it. So it it's sounds there. like they know what they're talking about. No, 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 no. This shit is just fucking gone, bros. Like, so, so I'm, I'm, it vanished. L- let me let me interject right there to and, help. And, and, and what's even worse, there are people who put their actual scrap from their current characters into a box. Yeah, and it's gone. Mm-hmm. Shit's yeah. gone. Yeah, gone. Go ahead, trip. Here, here's where I want to take this because again, we're going to be very deliberate with this conversation and try to keep it on track as much as possible. But it's going to echo out, and where it echo where it echoes out is the fact that what you just mentioned was the game not performing, and not just not performing, but not performing game in breaking. a very game breaking and experience ruining way. Right. right, it can't be on right now. There's right? no point in putting it on. We have that happening, and there have been a lot of other things in the game in Fallout 76 since launch that have happened and that are continuing to happen, and the perception to a lot of people that either have played this or are watching from the outside or even some that still play and think this is silly, they're saying, why are they so focused on developing this paid service, this service, right? Where it just going to make them more money. If the game itself still needs so much attention and fixing and quality, Mm. aren't the priorities fucked up at that point. And Mm -hmm. regardless of the answer to that question, Right? We don't even have to answer that question. That already, that perception, the, the fact that we're asking that question is just fanning the fire of hate against Bethesda. I know. So there doesn't have to be an answer. It doesn't matter if this is good or bad. It's just the fact that it exists pisses people off. Just baseline. Yeah. I love what that fucking dude did with the, with the website. Yeah, like oh, a guy bought a dude domain. Dude got a hold of the Fallout First domain and then before they were able to claim it. And then fucking wrote like an official anti advertisement for their own product. Because they had Fallout number one ST dot com, right? And he had Fallout first F I R S T dot com. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's you what would, he you, would, you would think someone he got interviewed by BBC also. That's pretty <laughs> funny. <laughs> He's like that far. And his response is amazing. He's like, I don't want money or fame or success for doing this. All I want is to sit down with Todd Howard to tell him why he's doing things wrong. 
Yeah. Like literally just to tell him you got to stop doing a all lot of this people shit are speculating that this way that this is like a Zen more of a Zenimax move too because they want to be able to profit more or they want to be able. Well, to, I was about ready to, to say recoup that recoup costs from sure the failure that, and that is yeah I'm under no says. impression no false impression that this is all one team making all these decisions like it's not a team saying you know what. Fuck the bug fixes. Let's get money out of people. Right. When we There's were, entirely different teams I, and workflows and companies that handle these and, things. And this is what I was talking about on Twitter the other day is I think the bug fixing team has their work cut out. Their work pretty much cut out for them. They're probably fucking going nonstop, nine to five. Just, and this is what I was talking about with, with their old engine because this game is pretty much cobbled together from the creation engine, which is a, an engine that's over 15 years old. And it, it's showing its age. It showed its age in fall in skyrim in some in some respects but fall four as well and now in this game they're trying to attach a networked like multiplayer setting to it and now it's really showing how it can barely handle that in some cases a lot of the bugs that are being reported that i sent i sent you that bug mm -hmm. list that's what each patch list looks like and every I time you sent me a patch list i sent you the latest patch notes that are on right. the fallout 76 yeah. subreddit right. and every time they they do that in the comments, you have people reporting newer bugs and saying, "I thought they fixed this before," or "This is an old bug that is now returning." And this is, and now these are constant things. This isn't like I'm. I'm still. I've been on this this subreddit since its launch. I don't just hate these subreddits. Reading. Well, you know, I just want to keep. I keep my tabs on Black Ops and I keep it on Anthem. I, I just, I just keep like mm -hmm. saying like, what, what's going on with these guys now? Like, well, sure. what's, what's happening? You're smiling at me like I'm like. Yeah, but I was, gonna, I was gonna. When <laughs> no, we were, I do it to stay in yeah, the yeah, know. Yeah, sure. No, yeah. I, and I respect it for sure. When, when we were having our debate in the Discord or whatever, more, I had thought about it on numerous occasions to mention it, but I was worried at that point if I was in a position of like I was going to be labeled as somebody who's just like. Um, what is it when you defend a dying horse? What is that? Just, I mean, what? Just like a fanboy? No. What? What do they normally shill? call? A shill? No, I'm not. Uh, yeah, of course I'm a shill. But no, um, I can't remember the, the phrase. But you mean more nuance to whatever you're trying to figure out? When you're backing the backing the losing horse. I'm not. It's not going to come up. Okay. Yeah. It's not going to come into my brain. Okay. I know okay. what I'm meant, but Got it. I was going to bring up the Zenimax theory. Yep. Like while I was chatting. And an apologist. A, apologist. Thank there you. There it is. There yes, it what is. I was looking yeah, for. Yeah. yeah, I thought you guys were going to be like, oh, you're just a Bethesda apologist because now you're bringing up that Zenimax is a responsible party. But I, I don't think. It's all of them. It's well, me. no, no, no. I, because this business model has the same structure as ESO, I kind of thought it was a Zenimax overarching company decision. Mm -hmm. To plot a pl to, to copy and paste it essentially from ESO yeah, I mean, right on to Bethesda. It's not that far fetched of a theory because not even like even taking it so outside you kind of, of like agree with me, a Zenimax right? thing. Yeah, I mean like look at Activision, look at EA. Like there's so many games that have been had decisions made about how they exist yeah. for the purpose of monetization, and usually it's not the company that develops it; it's the company that's publishing it. It and I can't remember if it was Neo or you or somebody. Maybe it was somebody just in our Discord. Somebody posted that there are some like really nasty, wretched business practices propagated by Zenimax in that company on the whole. Mm -hmm. And that like tons of people want to get the fuck out of that company because of how awful they are to their employees. Um, but I don't I can't I don't I'm, I don't, don't want to speculate that. But as far as as far as just like maintaining their reputation, the behavior th this this being released is a crushing blow to Bethesda in general. I don't think it's going to affect the next Elder Scrolls game, but like I have a, I collected a bunch of things that they said before launch. Right. Because of what they, of what I was they said in, in, in my defense, I literally did not read any of those things like in, in the beginning when the sure. shit came out, because yeah. I wanted to lo see the product without, the influence of all this negative negativity that was happening within the first couple of days of it. So I like skipped right ahead of that shit. Well, in the pre, the pre launch of the game, Pete yeah. Hines was the P he's the PR guy for Bethesda. Yeah. The guy who went out and said, it just works. It just works. That's Todd Howard. Oh, Todd that's Todd Howard. Howard not Pete Hines. Works. Yeah. Pete mm -hmm. Hines is the P a different guy, but people were asking him online. No, like, I know. I know the difference. Like, is there a set set limit to how much stuff we can store? He's like, store away, not aware of any limit. And then after launch, Bethesda was like, well, due to technic technical technical limitations of the game, 
we, we can't enable full limit, like uh, use of, of storage. You can't store everything you want. Lie. Well, clearly, because now they're charging you for it. Mm-hmm. And well, if it you remember work, in though. Fallout 4. There, there could be a technical limitation. It's in not fa- working. In Fallout 4, yeah, probably. <laughs> in Fallout 4, you could store away. It's an offline game. It's, it's, they, you, they can let you yeah. store whatever you want. So now they're char- – like, take, take the ESO out of it for a second because that is a different style game. Comparing it to the, its previous iteration right. is now – you, right, you don't. You, you don't get the. You, you sh- it's not fair to compare it to ESO in terms of like how the game functions, because they're not the same game. Pete, Pete also stated that there's always going to be new content DLC, and there's going to be no paid DLC or season pass. So that was like another thing. There's not no nothing paid in the future except right. for the cosmetic stuff. Oh, I can defend against this one though. Why is that? This is not DLC. I it mean, isn't. it's correct. It's not, I, I and they have it said DLC. that all the the Wastelander shit came out. That was free. That was free. And the yep. thing, the next thing come. No, Wastelanders is not out. That's the thing that's put, that got pushed back. The uh, Appalachia Trail thing that came out that was free. Yep. I they I also, I agree that it's not. I mean, it's workshop. It, and it language. doesn't. It, it right. doesn't fall under that umbrella. It doesn't fall under the umbrella. But when you say this, when you say these words, yes, right. You no should have read it literal, guys. No one's gonna say, <laughs> like. Oh, but we're gonna we're gonna oh, we un- do a monthly service. Oh, we service. understand yeah. that like that's not what you meant. People are gonna say you told us you wouldn't charge us for anything, because that's what people hear. Right. That's not what you said, but that's what people hear. People yeah. hear they're not gonna charge me for anything, there's and now a- they're charging you for something, and that immediately is a whole. There's also a shift. perfectly good example of a company that said they're not gonna charge you for anything, and the shit came out, and they still haven't charged people from day one. Grand Theft Fucking Auto Online. They don't charge you. They charge you for shark cards yeah. if you buy those. But the content, every single thing that's a part of their content they has come it. out for because free. They got a lot of whales over at they Grand Theft Auto. Grind and a half, too. They dude. got a lot of uh, whales. They were like, it's free, but you're going to have to basically but, put yourself on a torture machine and torture yourself for, for fucking 24 hours. Mm-hmm. At the same time, yeah. he also promised that all cosmetic, all microtransactions would be cosmetic. And they have also... Said, well, we 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 think our player base would rather have these other co- transa- microtransactions, mm-hmm. like the fridge, which is what's the fridge? The fridge is a thing you can buy in there with Adams, and it will allow you to store food, and they it won't spoil food. And there's also other like boosters and other things of that nature, like we're familiar with, like Ubi games. Yeah, but you can earn the currency to get the fridge, right? Right. You can earn that. Sure. But you don't have to grind a lot to get that uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The amount of currency for that. Yeah, no, of course. I'm not disputing I, this you. Is, I get this it. is nitpicking. It's fucking, no, it's but gray. It's all it's, gray and it, fuzzy and shit. Oh, for sure. For sure. It's gray. Um, but when you say only cosmetic microtransactions, and right, then all sc- of a sudden you have a service that is giving you in-game advantages. The one I agree with, Neo, the fridge is on, on, it's totally gray. It's gray. What's not gray are the, the scrap kits and the fucking repair kits. Yeah, it's pay to win. That's fucking, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> it's, it's pay to like not have to go back to your fucking base. I use the scrap kits. I love the scrap kits. Sound you can great. still earn the currency to get them. You can still do that, but like, you know, come on, man. So a few things, a few of the issues that people are having with the Fallout First is the private worlds are not new or private. Um, users have reported loading into these worlds to find half of their stuff has already been looted. So it's like they're recycling previously. Yeah, I kind of agree I with think Bethesda worlds. on that one. I think that one has been debunked. Was it debunked? By by other people that had similar issues and Bethesda's support themselves. I think it depends on the proximity of when a player has loaded into that private instance okay. based on what they had last done in their own game. I, I didn't have Because of the way the game does its instancing. Yeah, I literally had no problem with... with but again, in the world. really bad perception was. Really bad. And also, just the idea of calling these things like private servers is in, is inherently false to the idea of what a server does. Yeah. Uh, which it's I, a session. It's a private session. It's a session. private mm-hmm. session. Because private server it usually implies that you're not going to – it's a persistent world that will always be yours. Yeah, if you tell you someone stay there. you're yeah. renting a server or even server space, that implies, cool, this is my space to put on whatever I want. And to have it remain there yeah. when I'm not there to access it whenever I want. Like, that's yeah. what I'm paying my money for. Like, right. Minecraft, like in Minecraft is a right. good example. Let, right, let right. me explain a great example. So there are these things that I thought would be really interesting. And I actually had said in our debate in the Discord 
that I think this was a true statement, and now I've debunked it personally myself. Go ahead. So what I thought was, if you went into this private server and did some things, they're called public workshops. And if you pull your public workshops and you build stuff in them. I remember them, yeah. It'll be there when you return. And I tested it. Mm -hmm. I built all the shit in one public workshop that I took. I left. And about a minute or two later, came back. Bam! Everything was still there. And I was like, holy shit, so this it, is cool. It must have loaded you into the same session. It did. It does right. every time. It does. So it loaded me back in. The session's there. The public workshops are taken. I took more than one, tried it, left. You know what it was? Hmm. The amount of time I had left for. Right. It'll probably left, time you I out. I left 30 fucking minutes, went and had some food, came back, shit had all reset. Yep. And I was like, okay, this is not fucking that great. This sucks. Mm -hmm. um, because it should it could, should stay there. If this is the private server or session or whatever you want to fucking call right. it, I should be able to take workshops and have it stay that way, bro. Like, you need to just offer that if we're, we're fucking paying this so for the service. So the, the analogy that I would use for these – that for this type of private session is the ability to play Diablo three, for example, publicly, and then being able to play in a private session with just your friends. Because once, once everyone leaves that private session is kaput, it's gone. No, You're just creating once a I, private room. it's the same. I think it's the same amount of time when I left and, and did that experiment. Somebody was playing with me. They did not get booted when I left. Okay. Even though I was the paid member. This, but was, I think but it's was this still... one of was, was this one of your private sessions? Yeah, that you loaded in. Okay. Yeah, this is all testing with the private session. So I was playing with a friend. He was online. He was doing. He was even doing a public event. Yeah. I left, went out after a minute, came back. Nothing interrupted for him. He he was able to stay in there. But I think he's all he's also on the thirty minute timer. It's very possible, right? Because I think well, n not only did it reset my shit, but if he had still been in there for thirty minutes later, it would have booted him out. Booted, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's so what I think. so. I take umbrage with it because it's almost as if they're charging you to be able to not play with other people, like to play with public people and just your friends. You do not understand what lengths I would go to to not have a troll's dick in my fucking ear. We do. We do. We do understand. My problem is I that, know. that they're charging you for the ability to, right. to play without a troll's dick in your ear. You know but, what I mean? And they promised that they were going to roll that feature out. I know. Yeah. They, they broke did. their that, fucking promise. Thing, yeah. yeah. But at the same note, Everyone. I just don't know how you could continue trusting. I told you I made a separate character. Is that <laughs> no. enough? I'm no, just saying, he, just trusting the idea of enjoying the game and playing. I the game. really fucking love Fallout, dude. Like I yeah, really I love it. It's the exact reason why I'm so pissed off. When I, when I didn't want to say it in the Discord, but I'm so pissed off at fucking Outer Worlds because their survival mode is bullshit compared to compared Fallout to 76 mm -hmm. fucking survival mode. Like, it's outstanding with the eating and the drinking and the rads and all that shit. I don't have a game that compares to it. If mm -hmm. there was one, I'd go somewhere else and fucking play it. And I thought I had it with Outer Worlds with this fucking supernova mode. Right. And then discovered that the fucking goddamn game never saves when I'm fucking playing it. I'm never going to fucking be able to play that with my... Level of impatience. <laughs> I had to workshop that for you, you because you, you have more of a patient temperament than I do when I, it comes to. I just personally that's exactly worry. What I was going to challenge you on when so. they when they Good reveal addendum. when they reveal Auto Scroll Six. I don't know how I'm going to be able to trust anything that they're showing me. No shit. With the reveal of seventy six up until today, these are a lot of fucking lies, dude. It's a it's it's stacks, man. You could fill a book with the amount of like that they lied. And there are video there are video compilations that you could find. The, the internet historian did a whole twenty six minute video of just like everything about seventy six. I think if I were to think about the future of Bethesda games, because I'm obviously very excited for Fall, Elder for Elder Scrolls six. Star... Very excited for Starfield, Starfield. dude. Starfield. Are you fucking kidding me? These games as far as we know, are not going to be service a persistent games. world service game. We hope so. We hope, we right? Hope. But but here's what my concern is. It's fucking stupid they're, if they did that with the uh, Bethesda recently has, yeah. has shown us that they're very much their idea of attaching shops and certain like paid stores to their uh, latest games at the detriment to a lot of I, – I, I, I personally think the quality of the games in various ways. Like with like Rage Two and what what other games did they release this year? Um, Seventy six being one. Sorry, I'm looking at well, Rage Two yeah. was just blah. Just blah. I'll yeah. play it eventually. I think. 
I don't know. You played Rage 2. Yeah, but I'm saying like I didn't keep at okay. it because um, it was just Wolfenstein, weird. Young Bloods, like a lot of a lot of these these games. I know this isn't Bethesda Game Studios specifically. It isn't. So who the, who the fuck is guilty? I'm talking about just the umbrella, the publisher Bethesda, Zenimax, and them and the like. The publisher, right? The, the overarching company is Zenimax, not Correct. Bethesda. That's what I'm saying. But right. they're, but they're also but they're labeled as the publisher too in a lot of ways. It's the same. It's the same thing. Bethesda publishes, and ZeniMax is the parent company. That's like pretty much the. Yeah. That's the idea. A lot. Of, this worries me about Starfield because we saw with Elder Scrolls Five Skyrim that they 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 had mods right, and then they wanted to get in on that mod scene, and people got real pissed at them for that. I don't know if you remember that back in. Oh yeah. Back in yeah, because they tried to. Uh, it was offer like a, a horse mod. thing. It was like a five dollar horse. Wasn't that it? was Something Oblivion. Like that? No, you oh, said the horse oh, armor. Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is this is where we're talking about the slippery yeah. slope because yeah. you're you're talking about like day one of the slippery slope. No, they and were gonna try to charge for mods in they Skyrim. They were in Skyrim. Yeah. People were and like, people were like, the what the fuck? Here. Get out of my game. Yeah. So what did they do? They made Fallout Four. And they attach their own store of people's mods that you can they were, get. They were all mm -hmm. crap, though. I'm sure they, they were. Sucked. Yeah. Well, they had limits to work with, especially. Well, you right. well you played on a console, so I yeah. don't I don't know how console mods operate, but yeah. PC mods you can go fucking nuts. Yeah. Um. Well, it was always the like. But we're but private we, we store, see we, the personal. What, what I'm what I'm pointing right. out is we're seeing this like kind of slope that they're taking and trying to get their way to, because Bethesda games. You buy it once and then you got you bought the game, right? There's no like uh -huh. remonetization. I know, I know, it. but their re their remonetization is releasing the game again and again and again on every, on every platform, platform that comes out. <laughs> but they but they want a macro they want a reoccurring like revenue stream for a lot of these. Sure, games. yeah, and that's why like mods like paid mods was like going to be one of those. So I'm concerned for Starfield and Elder Scrolls Six in these regards. I think it's a real concern. Do I think you? you should have it. Yeah. Thank you. I feel validated. <laughs> does it mean that? Does it mean that I'm not gonna buy them? No, it I'm definitely not. Buy no. them. But like, I don't. Take I don't money, want the assholes. quality of the game to take a hit. I don't either. Because they just want to find ways to sure. squeeze me. Yeah, I don't think anybody does, honestly. And that's uh, that's my problem with like a lot. Like I know it's like my whole my whole shtick here mm -hmm. on the show. But like a lot of these games that I've played in the past few years have taken a quality hit when they feel like they need to cut things. Did you guys think I was gonna stuff. put up more of a fight? Like I was gonna like argue and defend. Maybe I don't know. I was the, worried. The sinking Titanic. I was ready to throw down this this headset and just dive over there. I really. I'm not like. I'm just saying, if I could go back and play show. Fallout Four or Fallout New Vegas or whatever, and get the experience that I'm getting in '76, I would do it. But the things that they did improve upon in '76 that do work, will keep me playing '76 until. I don't know, fucking Starfield. Scrolls comes out right. or Starfield comes out and they're fucking better and they're doing the thing that I want. That is interesting. And like I said, I was hoping that the fucking Outer Worlds survival mode thing was going to like work for me and it didn't. Mm -hmm. But I really do like immersion survival games. I really do. Most of them are over in your world. More motivation for me to build a new PC that'll run games because all those survival. If you games, want to play these new ones coming out in the future, that's definitely. Not, I'm move. not just talking about Bethesda. I mean, like Arma, yeah, yeah Daisy. Like, not necessarily those. Not ones where you're interacting with other people, but like one ones like a while ago, a friend of mine um, told me about a game that where you just survive on a desert island for Rust. It might be Rust, but he wasn't competing with other people. Rust has other people, right? It does. It does. It can. It can. I mean, a non-troll environment survival game where you just play by yourself trying to survive. I saw Anne Munition playing this game where she was on a raft. Yeah. And she had to keep, like, fixing the raft and then, like, gathering things like buckets of rainwater. Yeah, or, exactly. Or, like, catching fish and stuff like that while going somewhere, like, uh -huh. on this raft. Like, that was cool as shit. Uh, I forgot what that name is. That that's game what I'm saying. Called, yeah. Like, those are the kinds of survival games that I... But games where I'm not necessarily interacting with other people. The the perk that I got from 76 was, oh, wow. I could, like, play this with, like, two other buddies. Yeah. And be cool. It sounds like it's called Raft. Yeah. Raft. Raft is it. It's Probably was. Yeah. yeah. But, like, I, I found out that the perk I got from playing 76 is... I really enjoy resource gathering with somebody else. Mm -hmm. I don't need to do that in a world populated by an MMO level amount of people. I don't need to mm -hmm. do it on a 64 person server or a 32 level server. I, I don't give a fuck about all those other people. 
What I do like is the ability to go in with my buddy Splorence, me and him in a private server or session or whatever you fucking want to call it, can play throughout the whole Fallout world and do it together and not be interrupted and just enjoy it together. Mm -hmm. That's fucking cool. I think just, I guess, me personally, I don't feel like private games are worthy of charging for because that is a feature not just in the Fallout series, just any online game generally offers the ability to have private just matches. Just a video game feature, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I f- honestly... No, to, I'm not to disagreeing me, with you on the price. I mean... As a, per- as a person who, I guess, cares about this kind of thing, them charging for these these things is honestly like if I, if I was in your shoes as a player who since day one of the game supporting it and just sticking with the game, I would feel insulted by the by the developer releasing this kind of charged payment service but enough to like put down a game that you play you played religiously for a whole year and enjoy or not or just not pay for it or, i would just or, continue to not pay for it and just do it well you heard my motivation for paying for it i wanted well, to to test it so we could talk to about test it. it so we could talk about it and see if i think the perks are beneficial so apparently this is a really funny thread that, I, that I saw uh in the set fallout 76 subreddit fallout first players are being targeted in public mode because you can oh, see, because you can get their no, emotes in the ranger outfit. That's what, exclusive. Is that exclusive to PC or is that happening? Don't know. I don't know. Okay. But, well, I will tell you that, that, you know what that's based on? What's that? Probably the PlayStation and Xbox exploit that they still haven't figured out yet. Right. You Remember can, like, that I you talked can, like, about it? If he's on your buddy list in a private world, you can just join if, that world. If, get this trip. If mm. somebody is your friend on Xbox, it they doesn't matter. They can just join there, your there's shit, There's a right? block button in Fallout. Well, yeah. it doesn't mean tick when they when somebody just randomly joins on you through Through xbox Xbox. oh god are you fucking kidding me (laughs) fallout people bethesda developers need to just talk to fucking xbox and make this go away the best part about this thread was someone said oh great bethesda started a class war between the paid users and the Mm non-paid users oh god (laughs) which i thought was hilarious Um, but but i'm literally like of course they're gonna just join on me because they can through xbox sure they can of course so they 100% have to come out with a patch that blocks out the um, the ability for people to come into your server. Fuck that. That's fucking stupid. Yeah. Never happened to me, though, in the 20, 24 hours that I played. Hey, well, at least now you can stream the game again and not worry about it. No, uh, but it probably didn't happen because I'm offline right now and haven't been streaming. I was able to play it fine right. because that, I wasn't That's going to be your real test. My play real test. private world on stream yeah. and see if your your Let's see if somebody just fucking joins it. Come, you know? Yeah. Um, Man. I will tell you the one feature that I thought was really cool, uh, which ha- had to be uh, added to Fallout 4 and Skyrim as a mod, dropping a camp. Yeah. I know you get like that camp kit to like build a camp and all that shit. Yeah. But this is like a prefabbed tent that you drop that has your scrap kit, your your scrap box, and then an actual stash box. That was huge. Like I in the 24 hours I played, I would drop that right outside of a town clean the town out, walk back, scrap it into the box. And it made the gameplay so much more efficient. God. I understand it should <laughs> it like be. ruins a lot of the way I, like it ruins a lot of like what fault, like those games are. No, God. but it, it ruins, it cuts down on the amount of time you got to fucking go back to some place. I mean, right. Sure. I mean, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like you're, you're always like looking around. Is there a bench where I can scrap? Is there a bench where I can scrap? You know, like, I didn't have to look for a, a bench because I can use a scrap box to get the scrap. Yeah. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It was great for me. I know I shouldn't be paying for it, but I did. If I took one for the there's team. there's a um a post about a little below the middle of the page that you have up right there, Neil. I think this actually there's a lot of things that I think are important about how people are feeling. A lot of that we touched on tonight, but this one really kind of hits this it. This one right here. And it goes, uh, no one is envious of those with Fallout first. It's a dirt cheap subscription. Rather, everyone is mad and afraid that your purchasing of the subscription will be enough to make it profitable and thus push the goalposts of what's right. acceptable in gaming further. I agree with that 100%. Yeah. Yeah. These, this is the thing that I'm always worried about, too. When mm-hmm. I talk about how much I hate microtransactions on the show, Yeah. It's, it's not that I don't disagree with the idea of being able to purchase little odds and ends for the game that you enjoy and you want to support the creators. That's like... Hell yeah, man! Power to yeah. you. We have people in our Discord who are like, like, like Andy. He's he's like he loves Bungie, and he he gets the silver, man. Like, like sure. that's totally cool. 
my problem with it is is it's telling it's giving the companies this idea that of what's okay and what what they can try next. And it's scary in a game like this because the things that you're you're paywalling are like very useful basic game functions like storage. the ability to to play privately, storage. It's yeah. It's like things that are kind of inherent to how people enjoy online games. Like you definitely want to be able to play with your friends, but like Dude, even something like Destiny, I like jamming by myself. I like doing things solo. I would love for us to try private PvP matches. Yeah. That's something I've never used in Destiny, but the ability to well, do they, it is there. They haven't offered that yet? Oh, oh they have. Oh, oh yeah. it's there. Yeah. Yeah, it's we, there. we go in there to, like, test shit out. Oh, that's, that's a yeah. great idea. That's and it became... Oh, wow. mm -hmm. The minute... Get, that's like, a good idea. Yeah. And you go in there with a friend, you test your range, your, your fall off, your damage, your and stuff like that. Your point is, yeah. the minute that came out, it was just offered free. But and and for pick your matches. For your twenty your... years. These are all very common things. Like in Counter Strike, you can make private games in any of these things. But if in Counter Strike, Counter Strike or Battlefield Three, for example, you could pay extra to run your own private servers, twenty four seven. They they you you sign off for the night. It's still running because you're paying for the the option to run that for your. See, friends that's great because that's like else. for a tournament or something. You would do that, obviously. Right. You know, but that's got a very specific use case. Exactly. That's arguably healthy for the game. Mm -hmm. And helping the overall experience. Daisy is actually another good example. A survival game, Felix. When you buy a server for that, that is a 24-7 operating persistent world that you have moderation controls of. You reset the world state at your own leisure. You can change things around. You can like the weather. The weather, the day-night cycle. You can edit all these things as the moderator of that server. So these them charging you for these like private play sessions that are essentially just the world, but no one else publicly can join the only the only thing uh, well i'll tell you what would make it better for me and i've already said it but i'll say it again i don't need that i don't need to be able to control their world and like change the weather and do anything like that but wouldn't it be nice no it would be nice and everything but then it wouldn't be like an online game i would feel like i'm cheating sure right but aren't you kind of already no, other I'm players, <laughs> other players don't have the unlimited scrap ability. Or no, 10, no, yeah. and they don't have the ability to run away in in a private server, <laughs> right? I get, I, I see what you're saying. There. <laughs> like, um, it's kind of like a weird. I, I do wish thing. that if I returned to it, that it was in the state that it was in. I do wish that 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 would would have been fucking cool if that was a real thing and that would work. But alas, that's not true. Yeah, but alas, it, it, would, it would have been cool. Like if I returned in all the workshops were there and they were going and I was still what I had built was still there yeah that because was... then like oh now it's my region I now can mm -hmm. run all these workshops and like the PowerPoint yeah, and, one and, and I was yeah. you know I was imagining for the stream it would be like you know this is my server people can't get into it you want to come in you could create a business model around it mm -hmm. you know for the stream sure. where mm -hmm. if you subs one day if I had subscription if you subscribe to me you can come in and play in my Fallout 76 private server. People do that with Minecraft you know what I mean? all the like, time. Yep. Yeah. It's a great use case. Yeah. And but I, that's not what this is. Not and right now, no. Man, does it bother me. Is it okay not, that I make the statement honestly, not right now? If mm, I, I mean, what if they patch it and all these here's features? The thing. It's a lot it's it's a lot to trust they're going to change what they're asking you to give them money for. Because once you I put that label gave, on it, I already gave the money. The yeah, I know, there, but like, but, but they already win. <laughs> they won. <man. laughs> they won. I know, but like, imagine they make it different, and you've already given them that money. Mm -hmm. you it know? changes the terms, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. That that's another feels bad on top of all the other things that feel bad. Honestly, Felix, though, if it if it if they did release the service like a ten dollar a month service where I could control the Fallout world as I knew it. With my friends, that to me is a more appealing process. That's that's worth it. I would agree. Because then we can play it on our terms, but now we're playing it on their terms right now. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh yeah. Like, hell, man, Channing and I could hop back in that world and you're give it a go. You're again. giving them money to play with more favorable. The, terms. the question I asked is if they, if in fucking six months when they come out with the Wastelanders or whatever, if which, that, which got delayed by the way, right? And I, this got I'm released. I'm not mad instead. about that. I mean, I'd be. It's all. It's I'm all. Not. It's all perception. No, that goes man. exactly back to the what we were talking about earlier. Sure. With Last of Us Two, Let, delaying and make wait it for good. it to make, make, make it. They right, already but, lost that that war the, when they released yeah. in the state they released it. Honestly. Yeah. They should have released an early access. I mean, that's like another conversation, but they should have released this in early access for sure. 
this is just the long this is the most recent in a long line of conversations where we're like what are you doing yeah and this, this is and we're not even bringing up the canvas like like just the game not the canvas bag the rum and all the other bullshit that they <laughs> the what Oh, you didn't know about this? What's the rum? I don't want to ju- jump into it, but they essentially advertise this like premium rum, Fallout seventy six like labeled rum. I don't even know about this. You I don't know, know about this, oh, dude. <laughs> dude? Oh, seriously? Was, I'll, yeah. I'll send you guys links later. But they essentially they I, had this. Rum. I didn't get my memo on the rum. Yeah, I missed the rum. <laughs> Everyone in the office got rum. Why is the rum gone? This Why is, is the rum this, always this gone? Nuka Dark Rum. What the and shit? They dude? advertise this like premium rum. I would drink this honestly. Yeah. Apparently, the bottle was garbage. And just the production quality was garbage, and they overcharged for it. Hmm. Just the name, just for the name. How much did it cost? Oh God, it's eighty dollars. Eighty dollars for a bottle of rum? And they're yeah. plastic bottles. And a plastic bottle. Oh my God, that's horrible, dude. So and like nothing I buy in the liquor store, regardless of price, is a plastic bottle. That. Actually, that's a lie. But like you have to buy like Vladimir to, Come on, to not get a plastic, Bankins, bro. Bankers yeah, right. Club. Yeah, yeah. Jenkins, Bankers. bro. Things of that tier lived on a fucking half gallon Jenkins, man. Yeah, anything. We can get Jake into gin, rum. Uh, but if you're paying eighty dollars for liquor, you're not. You should not be getting a plastic bottle. That's you uh, got. You offensive. should watch, watch Internet Historian's video on seventy six. It's, it's really entertaining. Yikes. It's a real entertaining video. But anyway, hey, even we learned something new tonight. Just talking. Yeah, just Look talking about the Didn't game. No idea. Just. I mean, I've been. I've been keeping tabs. So <laughs> yeah. it's very. <laughs> Neo's got the inside scoop. He knows about the rum. Mm-hmm. I know about the rum, dude. I mean. And everyone, Yang Ye knows about like yeah, Yang Ye made a video on it. He's a common YouTuber who talks about this bullshit. But all that other marketing stuff aside, the game itself has just been just a constant train wreck. Just, just in my, in my opinion, watching it and playing it from those first months. I don't know where I was going with this. We I got sidetracked with the rum. I, I lost my. <laughs> is I he still trying train. to convince me? I, I don't. I'm not it's, trying to convince you. You, you know. What, you know what is funny that I that I do see from a lot of people on the outside. People love trying to convince people that like Fallout 76 that they should not be having fun playing Fallout 76. And I'm not trying to make you not have fun. I'm just mad that the experience isn't the experience that I would have wanted to get out of it. Yeah. It clearly is not. And I hope it is one day. (laughs) (laughs) But after a year of it, because it's almost been a year since it came out, I don't think they even care to make that experience. I don't fucking know, man. We'll find out. I guess we will. That's the, honestly the best way to approach the whole thing. You're having a great time. Dude, my expectations. It looks like shit over here. Yo, my we'll, expectations. We'll see what happens. We'll see, we'll what, see what happens. happens. Yeah. Dude, I was so pissed when I left Fallout 4. I, would, I can't go any lower. My expectations are fucking bottom barrel with this company, dude. Like, the, the mod problem on fucking the Xbox with both Skyrim and fucking Fallout. I was burned up. I dropped those fucking games for like at least six months. Oh, year. man. Dude, I you... remember those podcasts. I remember those. Remember it was like every week I talked about I it, how it was amazing like, it was. It was da, like da, da, a da, whole da. year of you just like talking about Fallout. And it's, like, it's like an internal meme in our community. Oh, the, my God. And then I had all this. talking about Fallout 4 again. Yeah. Mod, what's the mod of the week? And then it, yeah. and then it just dried up and stopped <laughs> because I got pissed mm-hmm. on a bunch of live streams I did where mm-hmm. my Fallout 4 file just trashed. So I know. I had low expectations going into 76. I didn't Body think it was going to be as good as it was, and that's the problem here. My expectations were so low. I went in and played this game. I bought it because it's a Fallout game. And then they improved upon all these features from 4. And I basically was just like, oh, wow, you got me. You know, like, yeah. I didn't expect it to be as good as it is. And I'm actually shocked because everyone around me is saying it's the worst thing ever. And I'm just, I'm still not. To be fair, modding is a different world on PC. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know that. These consoles aren't built to give up the no, resources that they're supposed to give up. No, we, That's all. We already talked about that. Yeah. I know the reason. That doesn't mean you want to go back and play Skyrim. my uh, special edition of Skyrim with all the right. textures and all the mods I have on there, mod man. is so amazing, dude. 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 Mm-hmm. Frostfall, where you like manage your eating and your drinking and your sleeping and the cold. I was playing that. God, it was so cool. Yeah. And then it just, just would not work on that fucking guy down there. I have all these like 4K texture packs on my right. shit, dude. It looks... Mm. Crispy. Shit's so cool. Anyway. 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 Let's wrap it up, guys. Yeah. yeah, let's wrap yeah, it up. yeah. It's a good talk. Great talk. Hopefully, uh, Elder Scrolls Six. Hopefully, has none of these problems. I. That's geez, the I biggest hope. So. Honestly. Hopefully. It'll, hopefully. It'll, honestly, that's naming a show. That's what it would be. It comes. Called. To, it comes down to whatever engine or APIs they use. Like the, straight up. Like if they're gonna stick with this ancient system, they literally can't. They can't squeeze another game out of this. 
I don't think so. I think it's we've we've seen the limits. Yeah, we've seen the limits of modern technology with this thing. Of well, its, we of we saw te- of its we, technology. We saw with Outer Worlds what a newer game engine can create I believe from their was, assets. I believe that was just the F, the um, Epic, because uh, what's they're, it? they're using a different game Unreal. engine. Uh, really, Unreal. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they're using a different game engine with a baseline of clearly the Fallout of uh, uh, New Vegas assets. Because the characters look very similar to the assets from New Vegas. No, the, that was Creation Engine. This is definitely Unreal Engine. No, I know it's a different engine. But, but just the, just with the way the characters look? It seems look. like they're using assets. They can transfer assets, can't they, between engines? Is that not possible? Depends. I don't know. We're you, not technical. They, but they, you could import your character model because that's just your that's 3D what I meant. animation model. But I or think, is it like the same artist that I, came from New Vegas? Because when is, I look at the characters, such a rabbit hole. But I yeah, feel yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I, know. I, yeah, yeah. I feel like like they would own the models, not they. I feel like uh, Bethesda would own the rights to the Fallout New Vegas models, and they wouldn't be able to use them. But they could probably tweak them, tweak them, or make them. Like, well, they're, they're look not like, but they're different. not cut and paste though. They're. I mean, I, can, I know what you're talking. Well, you about. You know what I'm talking about. There's definitely how, a similar. It feels like it when you're standing there in conversation with them, and you're mm-hmm. looking them dead on, and like that, and they're talking. Like you can see the simulation similarities between yeah, yeah. New Vegas and whatever. Yeah. But it's definitely newer and looks better. Oh, yeah, 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 that's what I'm saying. It's great. Anyway, I'm going to sign off now. Yeah, well, I'm ready. Yeah. I've been Neo Aoshi. You can follow me at Twitter at Neo underscore Aoshi. Follow me at Twitch at Neo Aoshi. I did a nice playthrough on Friday of Outer Worlds. I just want to get everyone ready. On November 8th, I'm doing a 12-plus hour stream of Death Stranding. Nice, dude. I plan. I took the day off. 12-plus. What does 12-plus mean? Until I get tired and want to go to bed. But at me. least 12, then plus. I will go from in the morning until late. As I can possibly go that day. Yeah, his last. Are you pro- are was you hilarious. are you promising twelve plus? I did it with Spider Man. Or are you promising plus? We're doing a plus stream. Here. I don't know yet. Okay. okay. I don't. I can't say. Stay Sp- tuned. Because Spider Man, I went all day. I was I, there for your Spider Man yeah, one. I went as long as I possibly could, and I went. I think. Yeah, I think I went from like, God, like eight a.m. like eight or nine a.m. till like I, two in the morning. I yeah. caught you at you like two I mean? or three in the morning when you were fucking s- kind of snoozing. <laughs> and yeah, and I was like, I got it. I got into you guys. <laughs> anyway, I think he's asleep. I plan on going as long as I can with Death Stranding and just seeing how it, how it goes. Um, sure. And if the gameplay isn't as fun as everyone seems to think it might not be, and there's definitely that possibility, I'm just going to streamline the story as best as possible. That's how that's going to go. So please look nice. forward to that. Go ahead. Um, I am Trip Zero. You guys can find me on Mixer.com slash Trip Zero TV. Um, all my socials are the same, Trip Zero TV. I will not be streaming this week at all, which is very, very sad because there's a lot of new things happening in Destiny. There's a whole new dungeon releasing. The Halloween event starts on Tuesday. Ooh. King Gathalian starts streaming on Mixer on Tuesday. Uh, it's a, a week bad to go away. week for me to be away, but I'm going to Hawaii with my family. Oh, so congrats. at least it's uh, it's going to be pretty, Good pretty trip. fun. Oh, yeah, poor a, baby. I know. Well, <laughs> kind of is the worst possible week to go. I know. I um, know. But, you know, um, it is what it will is. Will we have you next Sunday? We'll not. All we'll right, not. so yeah. no trip zero next Sunday. Yeah. Mm. Unforch. No we'll worries. See if we can get lock and key no back in the saddle here. Oh, I wish. Um, but, yeah, um, after that, I think I'll be back in a little bit over a week. So I'm leaving on Tuesday. I should be back the next Tuesday or Wednesday. And then, of course, we're going to be diving back in hardcore because, look, i got to build a mixer like everyone else. So Hell, yeah. Come on over. Uh, yeah, this is Felix Hergood. I've been off for, like, two weeks from streaming. Uh, I'm pretty sure that I'm coming back probably tomorrow. Hell yeah. Nice, dude. Um, and I'm either going to – I'm probably just going to stream my Outer Worlds second player through where I'm nice. <laughs> where I'm nice. <laughs> Nicer. Where you're not the Terminator. Uh, where I'm not the Terminator. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm probably going to be playing that. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Felix Sargood. Mixer.com slash Felix Sargood. Check me out on either. I play them both at the same time. All right, dude. See you next time. See ya. See ya. <laughs>